As we're finding out more about the COVID virus, one of the things we're also finding out is that even after having the virus, you can have some effects from it, whether it be COVID toes or blood clots, things of that nature, which are starting to cause some concern for people because like some viruses, like the flu, where you get it, you get sick and then it passes on, COVID virus actually has some residual effects that may affect you later. So if you're trying to figure out how to deal with that, I want you to keep in mind a few things. If you tested positive or had a COVID virus uh, symptomatic outbreak, talk to your doctor about what should happen going forward. They're going to have that conversation with you anyway, but you need to start making sure you engage them to say, listen, I know there are some effects that comes from this thing. So even though I've had the virus and I didn't have any symptoms or I had the virus and I had symptoms and we've moved on, what do I need to worry about going forward? Have that conversation so that you can start getting into your mind, the mindset of the precautions you need to take. You should also ask your doctor how often you should follow up. So for instance, because we're talking blood clots and, and COVID toes and different types of effects and so forth, they may want you to start coming into the doctor a little bit more regularly. It may be every three months, it may be monthly, it may be six months, whatever the case may be. But until they can get a grasp of all of the impact this virus may have, they're going to want to make sure they follow up with you to make sure that you don't have any unforeseen complications on a, on a more frequent basis. So if they're used to seeing you twice a year, they may bump it up to once a quarter. So this way, not to freak you out, but just so they can stay closely monitored to any potential effects it may have on you. Start asking your doctors what you should be looking out for. They're going to tell you these things anyway, but you want to make sure that you take a pen and paper or your iPad or your phone or your tablet, whatever the case may be, and take notes about what you should be looking out for. If this thing gets into your body, it can still linger in some effects in terms of the effects that it's been causing. So you don't want to just guess about what those things are. You want to know about what those things are early and often. So make sure you start asking those questions so that you can have an idea of what to look out for. You need to ask your doctor what you can do to reduce your risk. If you notice, one of the things that we've been seeing a lot more with the CDC guidelines is talking about these various categories of people who are in these groups that are more susceptible to the virus. Uh, usually they're morbidly obese, they have heart condition, they have high BVs, they have high blood pressure, things of those nature. If you find yourself being exposed to the virus and, or you, and you become symptomatic or asymptomatic, start asking, what can you do to reduce the, the possibility of any of these residual effects happening? Like with all things, most doctors will tell you that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's better than a pound of cure. It's a nice way of basically saying if you do what you need to do to protect yourself and prevent this from happening, it makes it so much easier to not have to deal with all the fallout from it later. Some of these things may be things that you can't do a whole lot about other than monitor and keep an eye out for, but you want to make sure you have as many tools as possible so that this way you can do what's necessary to reduce the possibility that any of these effects may possibly happen to you. 